Welcome to the Litecoin Developer Update. My name is Franklin from the Litecoin Foundation, so let's get into it. We had originally posted updates over on the forums before we moved to focus more on development. However, now we feel it is a good time to bring them back here, as videos. We as a group rely on community support to help fund Litecoin development, but we also understand that, that relationship goes both ways. So today I want to tell you what exactly is happening, what you've helped us achieve, as well as show off some previews for what we are currently working on. We obviously have quite a bit to talk about since our last update, so let's get into it. July the 16th marked one year since Loaf Wallet was published to the Apple App Store. To celebrate, the next release, nicknamed the Anniversary Update, will officially launch Loaf Wallet to version 2 and feature some pretty big changes. However, before I get into that, I first want to quickly cover the latest releases as well as some of the things that you may have missed or may simply not know about if this is in fact your first time hearing about Loaf Wallet. iOS version 1.0.3 saw the introduction of the new Buy Tool, which enables the purchasing of Litecoin from directly within the app through Coinbase. No account required. This inclusion opens up Litecoin to more people and makes it even quicker and easier to get started with Litecoin, as everything for someone looking to get started with is now under one roof. The tool is currently only available from within the US, however, and we are actively working to increase available locations and open up access to more people. So expect more territories to come in the future. The other noticeable change introduced was a fix to pay to script hash addresses. No longer will Loaf Wallets recognize multisig addresses beginning with a three, rather it will use the new prefix M as to avoid any confusions. If you still need to pay three address in the meantime, you can use our converter which we have uploaded on our GitHub page. So now for a bit about the anniversary update. It will predominantly be a major reconstruction focused on a user interface overhaul aimed at simplifying Litecoin and the wallet's functions to newer users, as well as improve navigation and content structuring for people already using the app. Along with this, work for introducing SegWit is currently in testing, and when deployed, low wallet users by default will be transitioning over to the newer SegWit type addresses and the benefits they bring for development. We look forward to showing it off with you and cannot wait to share it when it is done. Lowfollet Android is something we have been asked and requested to make pretty much since Lowfollet iOS was released. And we are glad to say that it is in development thanks to Hugo and Faisal who have recently joined us. Even better, for those interested, we have released a public beta which anyone can join by searching for Loaf Wallet on the Google Play Store. So check it out. Please note, however, as with all beta apps, do not use it to store large amounts of coins, as there is a potential for issues to arise, which could result in a possible loss of funds. So use it at your own risk. We are aware of some issues already and we'll make sure they are fully ironed out before a final public release. In the meantime, however, if you do happen to notice any issues that aren't already identified, please report them to the official GitHub repo and we will be sure to take a look at them. One more thing I want to talk about is community suggestions. You have been telling us for a while now of things that you would like to see included in future releases of Loaf Wallet, and we have been quietly listening. As such, the ability to see your holdings in your local currency is being worked on and will be included in the anniversary update and is currently already available in the Android beta. Another thing we are really interested in bringing to Loaf is the ability to send Litecoin through Apple's iMessage as well as make payments through NFC, just like Apple Pay as was shown off in Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference this year, as we are finally opening a platform up to developers. That is of course a bit further off and these changes will all be worked on with the Bread Wallet team upstream first before eventually being ported over shortly thereafter. If you have any other things you would like to see included in a future release of Loaf Wallet, 
or simply want to help contribute to the code, check out the Project GitHub page. August 1st was undoubtedly a notable day for everyone in the digital currency ecosystem, because we released Litecoin Core 0.14.2. This was a major release that saw various improvements, bug fixes and features introduced into Litecoin. Core developer Adrian Gallagher has provided a rather insightful write-up on what these changes are and what exactly they do in a great amount of depth, which you can find linked below. There's a quick TLDR for this video. It includes things such as support for the new M-style multi-sig address prefix, an update to mini UPMP which fixes vulnerabilities for those who use it, testnet 3 being replaced with testnet 4, various performance improvements including block propagation and validation times, manual pruning of the blockchain is now available, a new network activity toggle to enable or disable all P2P network activity, an out of sync modal which shows extended information about the sync process when reopening the wallet, sensitive data no longer being stored in the console, fee estimate and fee rate changes, the mempool will now be retained across restarts and create a new mempool.dat file in the data directory, and not to mention many, many RPC changes and improvements, to name but a few. And I do mean a few, the list is pretty extensive and that did not even cover half of them. For anyone interested, a link to the full release notes can be found below, along with download links for Litecoin Core 0.14.2. The next release will be 0.15.0 and will predominantly be a rebase from Bitcoin Core, although we are hoping to implement the much anticipated mast code into this version of Litecoin as well, which will allow for our smart crypto vault change to follow. There is still some work to be done, however, in this respect, as the code does need a peer review and audit, which is something the foundation is looking to fund if required. Johnson Lau, who created MAST, has also published an improvement protocol for coloured coins that can theoretically be implemented right now and would allow people to create tokens on Litecoin that can be coloured to represent other assets. We are certainly going to look at it as we think it is a great idea that suits Litecoin more than Bitcoin. However, we also need to take into consideration and assess the wide implications and changes it would make to the code base of Litecoin. The Lightning Network is a technology that a lot of people have a lot of questions about. So today I'd like to take some time to talk a bit more in depth and clear up what state it is actually currently in and what work still has to be done before it is ready for use proper. Currently, the Lightning Network is still in its alpha stages of development with beta currently being worked on. To expand a bit more on what that actually means, the Lightning Network developers have put up a list of bolts, which stand for the basics of Lightning technology. These bolts effectively describe the protocols for a second layer Lightning network, and currently there are 10 being worked on. They are the base protocol, the peer protocol for channel management, transaction and script formats, onion routing protocol, recommendations for on-chain transaction handling, interim node and channel discovery, P2P node and channel discovery, encrypted and authenticated transport, assigned feature flags, and invoice protocol for Lightning payments. I'm not going to get into a document of what each one of them does here as it is very thorough, although I will be sure to leave a link below for anyone who does want to check it out for further reading. As of recording, all of these bolts are entering their beta stages of developments bar 5, 8 and 9 which are running a bit behind and are still in the alpha stages of development. Fee management and how that will work on the network is yet another aspect that still needs to be worked on, and clearly it is going to take a lot of time to make sure it is thoroughly ready and all these aspects are working to an acceptable level for public use. Once these bolts are suitably ready however, then we can look at cross-chain atomic swaps and all the other exciting developments that the Lightning Network will bring to Litecoin.
Ever since our partnership with Ledger, people have been asking us if we are planning on doing anything along a similar vein in the future. And while we do not have plans as such, we are currently working with Alexander Wong of A Wong & Co to create 50 limited edition 18 karat solid gold Ledger Nano S wallets. We have just released some housing design models for what these devices will potentially end up looking like, and Wong is currently working with manufacturers to create some real life brass examples for us so we can get a better feel for it and make sure we are happy with it as a product. Each device will come custom engraved, so no two will be the same. Pricing still has yet to be announced and we are still trying to hammer out some of the finer details. However, when we are ready, we will release the final information and specification, as well as open up pre-orders for you to reserve a device. Shaolin Fry, as many of you have most likely already seen by now, has posted on Twitter that he has left us. We are saddened to hear of his decision and he will certainly be missed from the team, although we do remain in friendly contact with him. There is certainly no animosity between us as some have speculated and we do wish him all the best going forward with his future endeavours. There is always however space for him to return and work with us and we are more than happy to welcome him back if he wishes to rejoin us. In the meantime however we will continue to work as always as Litecoin is greater than the sum of its parts. Shaolin as many of you know was set to be hired as a full time developer by the foundation to work on core software. With his departure this leaves a space open and one that we will look to fill when the right person comes about. Litecoin.network is a project that we announced a while back and is designed to act as a visualizer for all types of network data, from block sizes to transaction fees and UTXO2 mempool insights, along with many more. Since then, we have mostly been working on the front end, setting up the UI and general layout to make sure the site is easier to navigate and to use. We still have a bit of work left to do in this regard, however, mostly with the filtering of chart content on the page. The main focus has since shifted towards the back end now as we are focused on how we are going to actually be fetching the data to display on the site. We have a pretty comprehensive list of things we would like to see included, some easier to implement than the others. However, we would like to at least get a working version of the project up in the meantime, as with something like this, Done is better than perfect, especially if it leads to further delays. The Litecoin Foundation was set up to help fund and develop Litecoin, and thanks to the generous donations we have received from the community and groups such as in Silicon, we have used those funds to hire Adrian Gallagher as the first full-time developer for Litecoin. Adrian is a long time supporter of Litecoin and has dedicated his efforts to working on the Litecoin Core software for free up until now, so we were in no doubt of his passion, dedication and ability when it comes to Litecoin. We are glad to have him on board and we look forward to working with him to make Litecoin great. In the pursuit of transparency, the foundation has also been publishing all of its finances publicly. All relating files can be viewed on our website, so please do feel free to take a look and check it out. We feel it is best to be honest with you, as after all this is your money, and we do rely on your continued support in order for us to function. This transparency in what exactly we are doing is one of the ways we hope to provide you with more confidence in us as a team. So. Thank you, as without it, Litecoin would not be in position it is now. And until next time, farewell. <laughs>